Houston Texans. We're going to start with their defense. We're going to start with a guy that people uh, probably don't know. It's, it's pretty much the J.J. Watt, but of the early 2000s, pretty much. A guy that was dominant throughout his days. I mean, a guy that's... I would say I, I miss him, personally. He was one of my favorite defensive ends um, out there um, at a point. I mean, he was scary, good. I mean, a guy that was fantastic for Buffalo, was a guy, guy fantastic for Houston for six years, uh, racking up over 50 tackles, or 50 plus sacks, and, uh, you know, was pretty much in every game for the most part. I mean, he attacked everything fantastically, and he was J.J. Watt before J.J. Watt arrived in town. I mean, this guy was a four-time Pro Bowl and All-Pro, and in my opinion, should be um, considered a Hall of Famer at some day. Um, his impact is tremendous, and I think, uh, honestly, I see him really putting some impactful pressure on really the other offensive lines to get to the QB, and I think him paired up with I'm pretty sure you know who the other DN will be. It's going to be kind of scary. Defensive tackle is going to be Antonio Smith, a guy that has the capability, of course, of playing the DN position, the D tackle position, too. You know, but he is a fantastic player overall. Um, his impact on the really the run stop is going to be pretty great. He can get to the QB, which is pretty great. You know, he's a guy that was part of the Denver Broncos defense not a big part of him but you know he did he did his fair share but yeah this is a guy that uh, played in Houston for six years and most in his career by one team because uh, he kind of shifted through Arizona Denver and Oakland uh, but yeah this is a this is a very passionate guy that I can see defensive tackle wise yeah he's going to improve a lot of a lot uh, pretty much in my honest opinion I think uh, I think Smith along with having Williams both on the same side it's going to be kind of fun to watch um, it won't be fun for the other teams but it'll sure be fun for viewers like me that are just football fans and, and just adore uh, great defenses like I do Whitney Merciless defensive tackle it's going to be the other D, D tackle that is actually um, a D and S kind of player but also can play linebacker position so overall for me, this is kind of like, I don't know, do you really want to put him out there? I do, because I really want to put him on the line. I just want to put him on this defense, because Merciless has done a lot in his short amount of time in Houston. Uh, but he has done a pretty great job overall um, in terms of the five years. Having a total of 38 and a half sacks in five years, not too bad. A guy that can and will be very, very valuable to this team. Um, and can adjust DM linebacker, D tackle. He's got it. I think him and Antonio Smith will be very fun to watch. Again, with Mario Williams, uh, this is going to be a sneaky, uh, a sneaky good defensive line. And I think their front four, uh, they should have a lot of um, a lot of success getting to the QB because there's a lot of these guys are just great sack artists and they they're. They're able to use their swim moves or whatever they need tactic-wise to get to where they need to go. And I think the run game of the other teams will, will face a problem because this is a pretty decent D-line for sure. The other defensive end, we all know, J.J. Watt, future Hall of Famer, um, multiple-time Pro Bowl and multiple-time All-Pro. Uh, to be more specific, four times uh, for each defense player of the year, um, three times. Um, He's done it all. He really has. Like he is a Hall of Famer, um, and you know, he is still young, and he has 76 sacks, and he's only 28. So it's a guy that can get 100 sacks before the age of 30. Um, I believe he will do that because he has the ability to. Because honestly, he's had 20 and a half sacks before already. He's repeated that. He's he has a lot of knockdowns. It's it's a it's an amazing. Like, his value level is amazing because without him, the defense kind of fluctuates. Again, Jadavion Clowney's kind of coming into his own. There's different key pieces out there in the defense right now. Um, but I'm saying, like, without having J.J. Watt in general, that's, you know, you're missing a lot. And having him and Mario Williams in the same line 
is scary. It really is because they both are big men. They're strong, and they can get to the QB numerous times. So, honestly, whoever the other offensive lines and the QB, you got to be prepared because you're going to get hit a lot. It's going to be a physical football game between these both of these guys, and the entire D-line is physical. So, Now, if you don't already know, I can just tell you I'm running a 4-3 with this team. Their D-line is just flexible to run a 4-3 on that. So, three linebackers, poor D-line and the left inside linebacker, right inside linebacker, whatever. But it's one of those, um, sorry, for the 4-3, it's outside linebackers, but they're pretty much inside for the most part. They're not outside like, like you know, with the Baltimore Ravens where Terrell Suggs is way outside to try to get um, to pass rush. It's not that, but, you know, I guess I can just say um, the outside linebacker or even uh, the weak, weak side linebacker, strong side linebacker. Uh, but yeah, Brian Cushing, um, unfortunately, the problem with him is steroids, uh, but that doesn't really, it gives you power, obviously it gives you strength, but uh, the whole point is that doesn't tell you which angle you have to hit, or it's kind of kind of like that, um, obviously it gives you just, you know, it's a better boosting thing, but I'm going to give it to him, because he is the best linebacker, really one of the best linebackers in Houston Texan history, they are very short in history so I mean you got to put a guy like this and anyway he's had some great years overall and he's been a pro bowler his rookie year um, like I said he's been up and down but uh, you know let's just hope he let's just hope he just ends up not having to deal with the PD and he can just play normal football and become his normal self because he actually is pretty talented um, he just needs to just stop taking roids and he'll be fine um so but in my opinion though i think it's a good start to the linebacker core brian cushing is a guy that's tough and can can get to can get to the qb um but most importantly can tackle gets a lot of tackles so you know the middle linebacker D'Amico ryan's um yeah D'Amico's two-time pro bowler and he is alabama native but the, the thing with that is he's got a full system around him he knows how to play with the system you know it's just he's just ready to go and uh he's a guy that's a tackling machine he's been a tackling machine his his entire career and like i said a guy that can get it done on almost everything you, you tell him to he's really coachable and he's just he's a great player so my honest opinion yes i put Domingo as that middle linebacker position i think he'll fit super well and uh, I can't wait to see what he does um, in terms of, you know, playing on this all-time team. Now, aside from Cushing, is going to be Brooks Reed. Brooks Reed, the guy that, honestly, I don't think he's really gotten much playing time. To be quite honest, he really hasn't. Um, so we haven't really seen his potential as much as we, we want to. Um, he's, he's been, like... Praise in a way as oh you gotta you gotta watch out for Brooks Reed he's gonna come out he's gonna come out and they're like he's gonna he's gonna explode and you know that's not really the case as much as his career right now um, he hasn't really exploded into that player that everyone thinks he would be but I'm gonna put, give it to him he is like one of the top linebackers in their history and their franchise um, so I mean yeah I give it I give it to Brooks Reed for right now um, I mean he has the ability to get to the QB he's aggressive. And he's a smart football player, he really is. He just needs to stay on the field more and, you know, get some more playing time. But other than that, I do believe that he's going to end up, you know, um, voiding well for this team. Um, and again, it, it helps if he's on the right side more because, well, with Watt there and with, with Whitney Merciless both on the same side, he's probably going to be able to be more comfortable, you know, not, not more of a, not going to have that much of a responsibility as... Cushing and, and D'Amico have so you know, maybe he can just be he can just be chilling and not have to worry so much but he is a good player though overall uh, I just don't think he's like one of the best linebackers I've ever seen is what I'm trying to say all right cornerback need a good secondary I think this is a really good start Jonathan Joseph being the corner on um, primarily probably the left side uh, but he's played the right side but this is a guy that well first of all he's a smart football player he's a smart corner he really is and really, you can just tell him which assignment he's got. He's gonna, he's gonna go out there. He's gonna, 
He's going to do his his thing, and he's going to try really hard. And, you know, he's been in Houston for seven years and Cincinnati for five years, so only two years there. Made two Pro Bowls the first two years of him being in Houston. Um, he's, you know, he's just been a productive guy. Uh, he still is. Uh, still playing in Houston to this day. Um, and, yeah, no, he's he's a, he's a smart football player, veteran guy. He's got leadership in there. Um, I do believe that Jonathan Joseph will be a pretty good thing. And, like I said, he is, in my opinion, um, in the franchise history as of right now, Jonathan Joseph is the best cornerback to ever suit up for a Houston Texan. So, uh, for a Houston Texan, with the Houston Texans. So, you know, you got to give him his props. Smart football player. And uh, yeah, he, he can definitely he can definitely go with the best one, but he's gonna get tested a lot in this all-time league. The other corner is gonna be Kareem Jackson, actually, uh, the Alabama alum. Uh, really, he's done some really good work since coming into the league. Uh, honestly, he's become really uh, pretty good at just being a ball hawk and trying to create chaos as much as he can. Um, honestly, like I said, I think Kareem Jackson, um, as well as, you know, Jonathan Joseph, I really believe that those two together are going to be paired up pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I do believe the secondary is going to be tested, but I do believe that they are skillful enough and they are ready enough. They're, they're professionals. They're, they're going to get it done. I can just, I can tell. Free safety, you're going to have Daniel Manning. Um... Really, he's been in Chicago, Chicago, Houston for four years, but he was in Chicago for five years. Uh, productive there, got signed, went to Houston, um, has done tremendous work. Uh, hasn't played in the league since 2014, though. But, yeah, it's the guy that, you know, is going to get it done, and he's going to play all over the field. And Like I said, Jonathan Joseph, Kareem Jackson, they need some help. Daniel Manning, um, he's a smart football player. Um, definitely has never came across as the best free safety in the game. Not even close, but he's a smart guy, um, and I think he's going to make the most out of playing for this team. Also, you know, chemistry and everything. He'll he'll, he'll definitely be he'll be a good thing. And Kareem and and Jonathan Joseph, they all have played together, so they all kind of know each other's strengths and stuff. So just knowing that is enough, in my opinion. So yeah, so I do believe that this is going to be a pretty pretty okay secondary. Um, and they could be fun to watch, but like I said, they're going to get tested, and we'll have to see how that goes. We'll never be able to see, but you know, you never know. All right, strong safety is going to be CC Brown. So CC Brown, strong safety, um, you know, fairly big guy. Um, played in Houston his early years, four years um, that spanned off of a seven-year or yeah, seven-year career. He definitely traveled around, played for Detroit, played for Jacksonville, played for New York. But, um, yeah, four years there, out there in Houston, able to make the most out of it. Had three picks. He played in 50 games. Had about 200 tackles overall combined. He had, like, four fumble recoveries. Able to get a sack in there, you know. He was able to make an impact. And um, there is yet to be a guy that, on a second, put my finger and be like, yeah, that guy is the guy. That's the man that we need to like look at and you know be ready to just be like, yeah, this is this is the guy. That's the strong safety. Again, it was hard because again, I mean, we all know about DJ Swearinger and how he played you know the past two years in Houston and you know left, but uh, I couldn't give it to him. I had to give it to CC. CC has been there longer, patched up his stats a little more, um, but overall, you know, never know. He might come back, but right now. He is the biggest and the best strong safety that they got. Um, that's going to be an area of weakness. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see how it goes, honestly. Um, I do believe that this defense is upside. Kicker, you got Chris Brown. He's going to be the kicker of that. Uh, Chris with the K. So definitely not. Uh, do not type in Chris Brown. You might have that, that R&B thing out there. But anyway, yeah, Chris Brown is the kicker of the Houston Texans, been there for eight years, um, had an okay field goal percentage, 77.1, so not the greatest, but uh, barely, almost never missed an extra point, was a guy that was just willing to just, you know, he was an okay kicker, what can I tell you, um, 
had the most experience, been there in Houston for a while, patched up his numbers. You know, honestly, what can I say other than that? He's the kicker of the Texans. Um, he's made some 50-plus yard field goals, so don't write him off as being garbage because if he was garbage, he wouldn't have played for seven years out there in Houston. So overall, you know, pretty good kicker. Average, above average, but yeah, he's he's the kicker of the Texans. A punter, you got Shane Leckler. He's the punter of the Houston Texans. He's been there for five years. Um, I mean, he's been in Oakland forever, but uh, definitely um, competing against Ray Guy, that's going to be something. Um, I would choose Ray Guy over him. So he needs his spotlight. Shane Leckler is a future Hall of Fame punter. I believe so. I think he's he's done enough. He's have a lot of punting yards. Has a lot of just has never been blocked that much at all. It's, it barely, it's a it's a rarity there. Uh, from five years, he's only been blocked once in Houston. You know, a guy that has put up almost twenty thousand punt yards, and overall, he has a pretty average, pretty good punt, dude. Almost half the field uh, average. So that's not bad, um, honestly. You know, he's valuable, in my honest opinion. He is valuable to, you know, getting those punts inside the 20. He's been able to do that pretty successfully before. So, yeah, no, I, I do believe and I do agree that Shane Leckler um, is going to be the punter of the Houston Texans. All right, the returner is going to be Jacoby Jones. So we're doing this. Baltimore had Jacoby Jones. Very impactful. He was also very impactful for Houston. Again, I'm going to say it again. Quick man quick guy gets a lot of punt return and kick returns deep and at times can get it for TDs overall just a overall great weapon to them if they want to sub in Kevin Walter for him and have him you know be in the slot that's another good thing for them honestly it gives you another weapon for for Matt Schaub to work with so overall I don't see them um, I don't see any other returner beating Jacoby Jones he's been very consistent out there in Houston and Texans history. He's the best returner right now. So, obviously, every team needs a coach. The coach will be Gary Kubiak. He's been the most successful out there as a Texan coach. Um, you know, it's still early. I mean, this is still a young, very young franchise. But yeah, Gary Kubiak, you know, he took control of that team in 2006, um, was there till 20, 2013, I believe. Had no job for a bit in terms of head coaching wise. Then went to Denver. We all know what's going on in Denver right now. He's still the coach there. Um, but yeah, this is this is a guy that um, you're looking at a guy. You know, he won the Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos, but he put Houston in a pretty good place, dude. You're looking at, you know, he got them to the playoffs um, the past two years, and uh, yeah, I mean. Got him to a 10 and 6 record. Got him to a 12 and 4 record. Um, and overall, in the playoffs, he was 2 and 2. So it was 500, an average of like low, like division finish of a 2. So overall, 3 for the most part. A guy that's won, hasn't won as much as he lost. But this is, again, this is a struggling franchise. They've had their ups and downs. But he is the most successful coach as of right now. Bill O'Brien doesn't come close yet. So you got to give it to someone. It's going to be Gary Kubiak. So he will be the coach of this team.